Hey, what's going on Swifters? It's Chimney Swift here from ChimneySwift11.com and welcome back. This is episode 17 of my Morrowind Let's Play. And um, if you guys are new to this series or have just forgotten, <laughs> uh, this series it will be leading up to Skyrim, which comes out uh, November 11th of this year. So I'm going to be doing a playthrough of that game, but until then, I'm playing through this game. So in episode 16, oh, hold on, let me, let me edit the audio. There we go. It's always too loud. I forget to do that. Okay, so episode 16, I talked to Caius Kosads, and he said, the, spy, the journal here reads, The spymaster has sent me to see a fellow named Hasaur Zane Subani, an Ashlander who left the wastes to become a wealthy trader in Aldrun. Excuse me. He gave me 100 gold and told me to find out what Zan Subani likes and get him a gift. Then, I'll, then I'm to give him the gift and ask him to tell me about the Ashlanders and the Nervarine cult. When I have the information, I'm to report back to the Spymaster. So, um, we gotta head to Aldrun. And, um, actually, let me, it's nighttime, yeah. So let me sleep in this dude's bed. Just, we're gonna rest for, let's see, uh... Maybe six hours? Take me to 8 a.m.? Ah, here we go. In your dream, a tall figure with a golden mask greeted you, saying, There are many rooms in the house of the master. Be easy, for, uh, for from the hands of your enemies I have delivered you. It seemed you had died and could see yourself laid upon a table lit by candles. But with your own hands you touched, you touched the figure, and the figure drew breath, opened eyes, and rose from the table. Then the room was gone and the world filled with light. You awoke. Uh, so more of the storyline is sort of being entered into... Uh, what? Oh, it's still 3 a.m. Uh, more of the storyline is now starting to be entered into um, into the gameplay. As you can see, as we get further and further... Uh, okay, another one. You dreamed that a tall figure with a golden mask spoke to you. But you understood not a word. He smiled and seemed pleasant. But when he reached to touch you, it terrified you, and you tried to escape, but you couldn't move. You tried to cry out, but you couldn't make a sound. The figure kept smiling and talking, but you felt sure he was trying to cast some sort of spell on you. When you woke, you couldn't recall how the dream ended. Uh, so yeah, anyways, what I was saying, hopefully I can actually get through this night this time. <laughs> um, but what I was saying is, uh, as I'm sleeping here and sort of updating my, uh, my status on the main quest... Um, we get some of these weird dreams from time to time, and uh, it's just it's just part of the game. And but I wanted to read some of that stuff to you guys because actually be, they get updated in your journal. So um, all right, so we're heading to Alderun to talk to Zan Subani. I think that's how you pronounce his name. And. Uh, I would just like to thank those of you guys that watch these episodes. Uh, I guess mainly for watching them. I'm not a commentator who cares only about views. That is such a shallow, uh, such a shallow uh, thing for for certain commentators to do. I know. I mean, and we're all guilty of that at some point. You know, we 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 start a series or something that um, that doesn't do well. It doesn't have that many views, and we abandon it. However. My passion for this game alone, and I think the Elder Scrolls series in general, um, especially with Skyrim coming up, uh, plus the the dedicated about, I think it's about 2,000 of you guys now that seem to always watch these videos. And I would just like to thank all of you guys for um, for, for doing that, because, uh, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into every video that I do, or any, any, every video that most commentators do. I shouldn't say all, because there are certain people out there that probably don't spend all that much time on their videos. Um, but uh, I do spend quite a bit of time on these videos, making sure they're entertaining for you guys and fun. And, and you know, each series that I do has a different, a little bit of a different feel. I know I try and make this this series a little more relaxing, a little more um, uh, just just calming. And I, I like to think of this series as something you can just sort of watch while you're eating some food or eating breakfast or, or whatever it is that you're that you guys you guys do with your food. Smear it all over your face. I don't really care. Um, whereas, you know, Hunt for Oasis, the Minecraft file, or the Minecraft series that I do, um, is a little bit crazier, and the Minecraft Files is, is just truly, you know, just raw me and who I am, and just uh, more calmer me, but, you know, Hunt for Oasis is definitely, like, 
an excited me, a very fun me, and they're all they're all. It's not like I'm trying to be someone else or trying to um, trying to become something that I'm not. They're all facets of my personality. Um, it's just, uh, you know, I try and create a se different type of series for a different type of game. You know, Morrowind is a lot less, you know, there is some action in Morrowind, but I feel like, um, it also is, uh, I feel like it, it also is a, a more calming game in itself anyway with the music and just the quests, you're kind of walking around doing stuff. Uh, so I wanted to thank you guys, uh, those of you that do watch this series for watching it. It really does mean a lot to me. And um, I'm looking for Zenus Subani's house now, but uh, but yeah, I just wanted to thank you guys because it, uh, it it's it's really cool to see you know my Minecraft videos get you know the Minecraft files gets like ten or twelve thousand views per video and and Hunt for Oasis gets you know five four or five six thousand views and and you know some of my other stuff get a lot or little views it doesn't really matter it doesn't really bother me at all but it's really cool just to see all, roughly the same amount of views every time I put out a Morrowind video and that shows me that that those of you that are watching this are very engaged in this series and you're coming back for more so um, I just wanted to kind of thank you guys for that and um, yeah basically you guys are awesome so you all hold a very special special place in my heart <laughs> alright so we're gonna try and find we're gonna try and find this guy and I don't know I don't know where he's located Aldrune Ashlander. He's a wealthy trader. I know I spent a little bit of time talking there. It probably distracted me a little bit, but uh traveler. Dude, quit glitching out, bro. <laughs> oh man. Alright, nothing in there. Even these people get in my way. Alright, so he's a wealthy trader. I don't know. I don't know where to find that. Guild of Mages, Guard Tower, Guild of Fighters, the Rat in the Pot. Maybe it's maybe it's over here. We'll check the Rat in the Pot. I think that's kind of a, like a bar or something. I'm not really sure. Oh, that's the Guild of Fighters. The Rat in the Pot is over here, I think. Yeah. I don't remember this quest at all, actually. I don't know from when I played, but... Do you guys know where I can find this dude? Anybody? Man. Someone in particular? Yeah, I'm looking for someone in particular here. Uh... I'm looking. But I do not see his name in there. What about you? Okay. Go ahead. I'm not I'm not sure where to find them. Maybe they're maybe they're downstairs? I don't know. Or maybe he's downstairs? No, do you know? Nope. What is this? Arga Inga Ingoth, the jeweler. No, I, I don't want to join the Thieves Guild right now. I want to find Zane Subani. Right, what is this? Tongue, tongue toad. Uh, he's not going to be a Nord, I don't think. Estoril. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm a bit stuck at the moment. I am in Alderun, which is which is good. Okay, so where have I not visited yet? Oh wait, are the traders up here? Clothier. I'm gonna go. Let's go up this way. I'm gonna check to the left of this big scarab over here. I think that's what it's called—a scarab, maybe. Ugh, I don't. I think it's not here. That's the council club. Okay, what's that? Alright, there's nothing back behind here. Hmm. Okay, uh, what I'm gonna do real quick, I think, is, um, 
Actually, let's talk to this person real fast. I was going to pause the video a second, but... Let's see if this guy knows... Where this person is. No? Alright. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> and I'll be right back. Alright, guys. I'm back. So after much idiocy, I realized that uh, he is in the Aldscar Inn, um, which is here in town. So... <laughs> I uh, was right around the corner. Perfect. Well, we'll head over there now and talk to this dude. And there we go. It's right here. I did not know that. But thanks to the wiki, um, I found it out. So where is this dude? Uh, no. No. Is he going to be downstairs? I don't know. Yep, here we go. Hans Hasur Zansubani. Alright, I am Hasur Zansubani Chimney Swift. May you bless and be blessed. I do not wish to be rude, but if you have business to speak of, or business speak it, for I am at leisure and would prefer to be alone with my thoughts. I see, you wish to learn of the Ashlanders from me. And what is it that you want to learn? What are their gift-giving customs? A curious question. A gift is a sign of courtesy among strangers and affection among friends among strangers a thoughtful gift is a sign that you are cautious and considerate and aware of others wants and needs such is particularly useful for traders and travelers among friends is a private thing and subtle with great risks for the uh for the test of the gift is how well it is tailored to the receiver thoughtful gift yes a gift that shows that you have taken care to learn something of the receiver for example i love poetry no stranger could be expected to know this, but a book of poetry given to me by a stranger shows the giver respects me and has made a special effort to know and please me. But now I have answered your question and would like some time to myself, if you'll excuse me. Yeah, I would. Alright, so we have to go get a book, um, a poetry book, I believe. Let's see, uh, let's see here. Zane Subhani says that among the Ashlanders, a thoughtful gift shows respect and knowledge of the one who is to receive the gift. Fortunately, or perhaps by courtesy or design, Zen Subhani has mentioned that he loves poetry. Then a book of poetry would be a perfect gift for him. Perhaps a bookseller, merchant, or pawn shop broker nearby may have such a thing. All right, there was a bookseller um, in town, and I'm just, I think it's just around the corner, actually. So we're going to go find that out. Uh, bookseller right here. She's like right around the corner. Okay, where is this? Yeah, right here, maybe? Yeah, here we go. Alright, Hansur. Yes, the Ashland tri Trader, a bibliophile, likes poetry. I have a few volumes here, I believe. Words of the Wind, Ashland Hymns, the five uh, far stars around here somewhere. Okay, so Words of the Wind. Let's just try that. Words of the Wind. If it's alphabetical, it should be down here. Words of the Wind, right here. There we go. Let's see if we can mark this down at all. All right. So let's go offer this to uh, Zane Subani and see if he'll if he'll take it. Maybe there's a different book that he preferred, but I, I think this one will probably do. And he is you know, up and then down. These these little taverns are sort of built weird. All right, buddy. Your business with me. I believe I've answered your questions about choosing a thoughtful gift. There we go. This is a gift for me. I'm amazed. A copy of Words of the Wind. The words of the Blessed Mothers. I gratefully accept your gift. My people have never loved the written word, and I lament their ignorant scorn for such common yet potent magic. I thank you, and I honor your courtesy, Chimney Swift. It would please me to return your courtesy by answering your questions. What do you wish to know? What would you wish to know about the Ashlanders and the Nervine Cult? Ashlanders, there is too much to tell. Here, take these notes I've written here, what you should know about the Ashlanders and the Nervine Cult. But most of all, if you are visiting a camp, there are things you should know about courtesy and challenges among the Ashlanders. And since you ask about the Nervine Cult, perhaps you'll be interested in my views on the Ashlanders and foreigners, because a guiding passion of the Nervine Cult is their hatred of foreigners. Okay. Nervine Cult. Uh, yeah, let's see if there's any more. No, no challenges. Courtesy. Okay. What about Ashlanders and foreigners? Most Ashlanders wish all foreigners and their false gods could be driven from Morrowind. At very least, Ashlanders wish the foreign devils would leave them in peace. Ashlanders think it's shameful to attack unarmed persons, but they will kill without hesitation uh, an unarmed person who offends them 
Oh, or their clan laws. No Ashlander is fool enough to make a war against the Empire. However, if such a war might be won, many Ashlanders might cheerfully give their lives to win such a war. Alright, um, so it looks like we got the guy's notes, and I'm going to check those really quick and just sort of see what, what, they, what they say. Um, where is that? Where is this? It's in Subani's notes. The following notes are on the Ashlanders and the Nervine cult, prepared for you by Hasur Zain Subani. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of reading. Alright, I'm not going to read that. I probably should. Uh, there's stuff in here, you know, about their challenges, the worship, uh, and we will be dealing with the Ashlander uh, tribes very soon. But uh, let's go ahead and take this back to um, Caius Cossades, or Cassius Cossades, depending on how I want to pronounce it at any given point. So um, we're going to take this back to the spy master himself, if I can find my way out of this town, which is, I think, over here. And then we'll end the episode. So we'll see what, we'll see what um, Sir Cossades has to say. He's always got some words of intellectual wisdom to dash upon our lovely skulls. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying right now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're starting to get in the, in, right into the meat, of, meat and potatoes of the uh, of the quest. So this is it's really exciting. It's really fun. All right, this is a nice little tint we have on the town here. And we'll work on our our jumping abilities a bit as we. Mothera, what was that? Did you guys see that subtitle that popped up? That was weird. Speak some English, bro. <laughs> So here we are, we're back at the dude orders. Thanks for your report, but keep Zen, Zen Subani's notes on the Ashlanders. You'll need them. I'm promoting you, you and sending you to the Urshalaku camp to speak with Sul, Matul, and Nibane Masea. But before you go, I think it may be time to tell you what's going on. Ah, here we go, finally. The Emperor and his advisors and his advisors think you have the appearance of meeting the conditions of the Nerevarine prophecies. <gasps> what? <laughs> That's why you were pulled out of prison on His Majesty's authority and sent to me. So you could satisfy the conditions of the Nerevarine prophecies and become the Nerevarine. Here, this is a decoded copy of the coded package you gave me when you arrived. Read it later. It should explain everything. As you'll see in the decoded message, the Emperor and his counselors say you have the appearance of satisfying the conditions of the prophecy. Do you really satisfy the, the prophecy? Are you really the prom prophesized Nerevarine? At first I thought we were just supposed to create a persuasive imposter. Now I don't know what to think, but I'm sure of one thing. This is not just primitive superstition, and we will treat it seriously, just as His Majesty commands. So, Zain Tubani says Suul Matul and Nibani Mesa at Urshalaku camp are the heads of the Nerevarine cult, so I'm sending you to speak with them. Tell them your story and have them test you against the Nerevarine prophecies. As heads of the Nerevarine cult, they can best judge whether you satisfy the prophecies. When you've spoken with them, report back to me. Here's 200 drakes for expenses, and pick up essential supplies at Fort Moonmouth. Essential supplies. Before you go to the Urshalaku camp, see Samudis Vunis and Krulis something or other at Fort Moonmouth. I've asked them to put aside some potions and scrolls for you, courtesy of the Emperor. In particular, you'll want the cure potions. I hear the blight is very bad up north and use the Divine Intervention Scroll if you find you're over your head. It will get you safe to an Imperial Cult Shrine where you can heal and re, uh, heal, refit and try again. Alrighty, so wow, the, um, uh, yeah, holy smokes. So the, uh, let's see, the, the, uh, the plot really took a turn there, and, um, obviously I knew it was coming, I played the game before, but, um, it's 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 kind of a cool moment in the game actually when you're standing here and you realize wow all this talk that I've been doing for the last little while is is uh, is about you and as the character so um, I'm gonna talk to him real quick about uh, were the disturbing dreams you're worrying me Chimney Swift you're not going loopy on me are you a word of advice in Warren if you're having disturbing dreams the temple says you are crazy and they want to lock you up and if you are having if if you have disturbing dreams and think they mean something, then the temple thinks you're a prophet or witch. And they want to lock you up. So take my advice, keep, and keep a lid on it. So that kind of explains those 
um, the uh, the dreams that I've been I've been having in bed. I don't know if I'll see another one here in a minute, but yeah, here we go. In your dream, a tall figure in a golden mask spoke to you, Lord Nerevar Indoril, High Residian Residiania. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce that. Long forgotten, forged anew. Three bellied you. Three betrayed you. One you betrayed. There. Uh, one you betrayed was three times true. Lord Vorin Dagoth, Dagoth Ur, steadfast liegeman, faithful friend, bids you come and climb Red Mountain. Beneath Red Mountain, once again, break your bonds, shed cursed skin, and purge the Enwa from Morrowind. A nice little poem there for us to end this episode on. Uh, another disturbing dream uh, for us to hang our hat on and just log away in our journal. So, anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we are really getting into the really getting into it here so if you guys have any friends that are interested in this game or even interested in Skyrim pass this video along let them know that uh, that I'm gearing up I'm getting ready to do some Skyrim stuff come November and uh, and that this series is really getting heated so next episode we're gonna head over to the Urshalaku camp I believe I may try and do some side quests at some point uh, to kind of level up because I don't think I'm, I'm only level three and uh, in terms of health with 60 health ugh. There's no way I'm going to, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to struggle in some of these challenges that I have to do in these camps. So anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name is Chimney Swift. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like below and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Chimney, you're live in three, two, wait, wait oh, dang it.